Well, hey, everyone, and thank you again for joining us for 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I'm so grateful that along this journey, uh, we are able to meet each and every one of our mission partners and hear more about the great work they're doing and lift them up particularly in prayer. And today, uh, we are so excited to welcome one of our longest standing mission partners at First Baptist Church Alpharetta. It was actually in place long before I got here four years ago, and that's our partners at Bread of Hope. And so, hey, tell us who you are. Tell us uh, what your role is with the ministry and tell us kind of what's going on uh, right now there in uh, Colombia. Uh, hello, my name is Everett Rincon. I work for Bread of Hope Ministries, and we focus on um, working with an unreached people group called the YU people. And it's an uh, ethnic uh, group in Venezuela and Colombia, in both countries. It's a large uh, people group, about uh, five to 600,000 of them. Wow. And we focus on um, empowering them, uh, training them biblically, and empowering churches so they can go and reach their communities with the gospel. That's incredible. I mean, no, it's a great work. And um, as our teams have gone down there over the years and seen just the growth of this ministry, it's been incredible. Um, tell us where things are at today. Is there a story uh, that you can share with us about what's going on in the ministry right now? A couple of years ago, we were in this community uh, near the dump. It, it was uh, the landfill where um, there was a large community of why you people living basically from what they would grab from the trash. And this happened in Colombia. So we're trying to grab a story of Alan, this little boy. Um, he was 12 at the time. And uh, in the story, we're trying to grab what Alan, <clears throat> just his, his life, what he does in the morning. And basically his life was just getting up in the morning, going to the trash to pick up things and help work and work with, with his family. And we got to the point where I asked him, Alan, what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm. And he kept just like thinking he would not tell us. And I remember my sister was there trying to like encourage him, but is there something you want? You're going to be a doctor, an engineer. And at some point he just turned to me and he said, I want to be a missionary like you. Wow. And um, I was, I was just, shot because I knew in that moment that when we go into the communities and we focus on the work that we do there is so much behind of what we do I mean we're telling so much more than what we say with our words so um, that story just stuck in my heart and I just um, it means a lot to me it, it, it's very personal so I love just to see how God is using us to bring transformation in the communities and just to see how um, the opportunities we're giving the locals are going to bring an impact in, in eternity. Wow, I mean, I mean, it's a testimony to, to your investment uh, and the investment of those that are part of the team there and the difference you're making in the lives of people and certainly bringing hope uh, to a place that, that runs in short supply of it there uh, through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, and tell us a little bit, how can we be praying as a church uh, for Bread of Hope and for you in particular? At the moment, we have a big, big plan. Um, it's, it's a little bit of an exit strategy. We want to be working with the YU people, but we don't want to be there forever. We, we expect the local church to take up on what they are doing and carry on with the work. So by 2030, we have this plan where we want to see healthy Churches multiplying, mm. taking the gospel to their communities, um, growing in, in teaching the word of God. So um, one of our biggest priorities right now is that in 2030, we can see healthy, mature, um, what your church is growing in, in the word of God. Uh, and secondly, uh, let's pray for some of the programs. Right now, we're at this stage where we're trying to incorporate the the, the local YU church into some of the programs they have been impacted by the word of god they they see uh the wonders of, of the gospel and they're going back and making disciples we want to encourage them to um be part of the transformation in their communities so um in the region where we work uh, the YU people are um they live in extreme poverty 
they have little access to resources. So health is a huge need among them. Um, talking about communities that are miles away from the closest um, hospital. So we have a, a um, health program and through the health programs we're training people. So they have tools to treat different illnesses and situations in, in the communities. And but we want these tools to be used as an avenue to share the gospel. And we're actually yeah. seeing that um, pastor a few months ago shared with us how he came to take blood pressure on this person that was having issues. And he used that to share the gospel. And the person came to the Lord and he's sharing the gospel with the whole community where he went. So um, we're at this stage where we want the church, the local value church, to know that they are placed there in those communities to transform those communities. Wow, that's so good. Well, we need to take some time right now and let's just be praying uh, for, for that 20, 30 vision to come to pass. And so let's pray together there. Uh, Lord, thank you that you are doing a great work among the YU people. It's a people you've created to know you and have a relationship with you. And I thank you for the vision that you've given them at Bread of Hope, Lord. And uh, not just to make sure that they have access to the gospel and to training, but Lord, to make sure that they are empowered to have churches, pastors, and spiritual care, Lord, that, that can continue to exist long after this ministry um, doesn't. That God, that the church can continue to thrive among these hundreds of thousands of people there in Colombia and Venezuela. I pray that you would prosper their efforts in pastor training and raising up these leaders so that your word and your work would continue to multiply among them, God, and that there would be a great harvest among these people. Lord, thank you again for the opportunity that you give us to be involved in what you're doing in the world. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Well, hey, Bear, thanks so much for joining us, man. So grateful for the work that you're doing there. Thank you for your partnership in the gospel. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.